Kukrim, Kyoshi. The Kata Shoki Metal Build New Gundam RX-93 The ultimate collectible currently. There are many that Bandai has had and usually there were perfect grades of special coatings that ranged anywhere from $800 to $5,000 like the Black Phoenix. I forgot what it was called. This is the more affordable collectible Bandai has come out with. This is in conjunction with Tamashii Nations which you probably know best for the Farmania figures and the Metal Build Gundams. I was never really a fan of them, to be honest. Well, the Farmania figures weren't bad, there was a lot of detail, but the Metal Build Gundams were kind of lackluster for me. I hearkened them to being the version of console gaming for Gunpla fans. All the work is there, it's a prepackaged built thing, and all you do is take it out of the box and set it up. Whereas to Gunpla was like PC gaming. You customize your computer and you even customize the games you played to suit what you wanted them to be with modifications. The Katashoki New Gundam is a strange beast indeed. It's not the perfect grade we all wanted of the New Gundam. But there's no denying that this is actually a decent product. It's weird to say because the price tag is nothing short of staggering. As I stated in my unboxing video, the retail price in Japan was $880. Over here in America, you paid $923 if you could pre-order. Once again, thank you to Harriet New Type HQ for setting me up with one before the pre-orders were all gone and I would have never gotten this because there's no way in hell I was paying the exorbitant second party seller prices. And if you're unfortunate, you then bought this second hand and paid anywhere from $1,600 to $2,000. And now that these have been discontinued, simply this version of the metal build or metal structure, the price will only go up. But who knows in the future, they may reissue it. It's been very successful and sold out within minutes, so I don't see why Bandai wouldn't. It would lead one to wonder if there will be a Sasabi version of this. Fingers crossed Sasabi becomes a perfect grade instead, because really, the price is staggering. Despite all that, I have to say that this is truly probably one of the ultimate display pieces if you are a Gundam or Gunpla collector. But let's just stick with Gundam because this isn't Gunpla. It is a giant metal build. It's a metal structure, a whole new thing. The inner frame is completely metal. The outer bits are pretty much 95 or 98% plastic. The weapon gimmicks are beautiful, actually. These are really well done. The funny thing is, the metal build gets what Bandai has forgotten in recent years with their perfect grades. Gimmicks, opening hatches, frills. I mean, with the perfect grade unicorn, the big gimmick there was RGB, but the inner frame was so lackluster, it was almost like messing with a scaled up master grade. I hear the XE isn't bad, but let's face it. The modern perfect grades are a far cry from what they originally started out to be. For instance, the GP01 perfect grade is a builder's dream. Whereas to recent perfect grades have felt meh. Not back on point. As you can see, even the blaster itself has so many mechanics and gimmicks and opening hatches. It's amazing. Even the ammo box, magazine, whatever you want to call it, because I don't know what they call it in the future, has a spring-loaded bullet system which I think they took from the miniature 1 8th scale weapons that are made in China and stuff, but that's a whole other thing. The bazooka is pretty straightforward, but it's actually quite huge. The ammo box comes off, and it's highly detailed, and it also splits in half, or folds into itself. This is great design. I don't know why Bandai didn't incorporate this, but once again, I think Bandai could learn a lot from this metal build. To remind them of what they've forgotten. The detail that's packed into these pieces is inspiring and I'm glad to see. And frankly for the price it should be over the top in every sense of the word. And I think that 
Tomashi Nations with Katashoki, if that's a person who designed it, really did very well with this. Even though there are things I could nitpick all day, like I felt the paint should have had a bit more transitional, it should have looked a bit more matte to me, whereas to I find the white on it is a bit toyish. The shield, by the way, I'm all over the place. I should say these are my final thoughts. The shield is also loaded with detail. Fantastic. This is what you want to see. I want to see detail. I want to see gimmicks. I want to see part separation. I want to see something that you can be proud of, especially for this price. This is 100% meant to be in a glass display, well lit alongside your hot toy collectibles or sideshows. I would put this up with a sideshow collectible piece. This is pretty much Bandai's answer to that. And since this is the first iteration, I'm 100% sure that when they continue doing this, which I'm sure they will, it will only get better from here. Probably more outlandish. The shield has as much moving part gimmicks as the Gundam itself almost. It has, what, three or four phases? And for some reason, cycle frames. If you pay close attention, you'll notice that the cycle frame paint job on the new Gundam matches the same one you see on the final battle version of the GFFM Unicorn Metal Composite, which is also from Tamashi Nations. It's the exact same paint job for the cycle frames, which I find interesting. The shield also folds out just a little bit more, which makes great display stuff for, you know, the maintenance crew to be inside. By the way, the arm clip-on thingy, very much Burkhaw inspired, in my opinion. Here's one of the things I can criticize, the hands. I don't really care for them. They are only double jointed instead of three joints, which is weird to me that they went this road. Why not three digits? It doesn't make sense considering the fingers don't really hold the weapons in place. The hands have the same locking mechanism as the Master Grade 3.0 or 2.0 hands that you see on the bigger UC universe master grades that had the fully articulated fingers so why wouldn't they go this road especially if it's all this heavy duty design on top of that the fists do not fully close they will forever be in this sort of grabbing pose which means you'll constantly have to have something in the Gundam's hands or you have to have his hands open or else it'll look really weird to me like I don't know like the Gundam itself has arthritis I can't come up with a reason as to why you might find some footage a bit shaky, I broke out my gimbal again, but I didn't calibrate it properly for this, and I really should have. I was being lazy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it at all. Next up, the base. This, I feel, didn't get the same level of attention as the new Gundam itself. The base feels like an afterthought to me, or it feels like the base was made like, they probably had the base in mind, obviously, because the original prototypes looked a lot better. And they probably figured, you know, it'll cost too much to do it this way. Let's make it as cheap as possible to can, you know, to keep the price that they promised everyone. Who knows? Uh, the base is a flimsy ABS plastic. The sliding stand at the back, it makes no sense because it's useless. Maybe I'm blind or something. Or I can't read the Japanese text in the instruction manual. But there's nothing there that locks the base in place. It can hook into the back of the new Gundam. But if it doesn't have, you know, like the strength to hold the new Gundam itself, then what purpose does it serve? If I move the new Gundam slightly, the base just slides back down. And then everything gets knocked around. It really doesn't make any sense that they couldn't come up with like a plastic joint mechanism like any other master grade or Gundam designed action base. I'm confused as to what the thought process was. Or maybe I should save that for the end, actually. Stupid me. Now the fully revealed Gundam. I skipped doing phase two, which technically is just all the opening hatches, just a few left close, and went straight to phase three. This is how most people probably display this thing, with all the hatches wide open. And I feel it took some design cues from the Verka. And I also feel like they tried to keep some elements of the new Gundam reminiscent of the 1988 movie Shars Counterattack. Overall, there's nothing I can say too much about this other than it does look very cool. But a lot of the parts are delicate. 
the instruction manual constantly reminds you that a lot of the pieces are delicate. And in fact, I popped out like two or three pieces trying to get them open correctly. Some of them just fight you on it, and I don't know why. Oh, well, back to the uh, base. As I stated before, um, I don't know why it even has a stand that connects to the back of the new Gundam. Considering the new Gundam itself is very sturdy. Like, it can hold up its own weapons. It is one of the sturdiest things I've ever held that's Gundam related. This thing is a brick in all the right ways. It will stand without a problem. So, I don't know why it has an action base connector. It, it does nothing. All the lines for the hooks and whatnot, they're just plastic. Yeah, it's like a plastic tube. And that's very flimsy, very shaky. It doesn't connect very well. It's not solid. You know, I don't understand what Band Bandai or Tanashi Nations, I should say, was thinking here. The base is the cheapest part of this entire thing. It really is. Like, they couldn't have paid a little extra money for maybe some thicker plastic so it at least feels like it could hold up some weight and not be so flimsy and pop apart all over the place. I really don't understand. But then again, this is a display piece. It is meant to be in a glass case. It is meant to be in an acrylic case. It is not meant to be fiddled with. That's probably why the base is so flimsy. It's just for looks. That is absolutely it. Which is funny because if you look at the trailer for the metal structure, they have action base for added play. There's no play here. This action base can barely stand a strong wind. It's ridiculous. And since these things are discontinued, the last thing you want to do is break it. And I figured I'd end it all with a Lazy Susan. Which is, uh, you know, the spinning little disc that most YouTubers use. It's very effective in letting you see all the angles of the new Gundam. Please forgive the uh, light box. It's a cheap one. I'll probably have to buy a more expensive one at some point. I got this for like maybe $60. And the LEDs, even at the lowest settings, are so bright that on this new Gundam's white, it just burns. You know, it's just a very, very acoustic bright light that ruins your ability to see the model kit sorry the figure itself i i'm pretty sure i said earlier that the white they use for this new gundam is very very white like this is i don't know, i almost want to say a fluorescent light like this thing catches light and just projects it it's actually fairly annoying really inside of my glass case this thing just seeps up light and it's just it's too bright. It makes it look more like a toy rather than an expensive figure or collectible piece. They really should have opted for a better color, I think, or, or a less bright white, in my opinion. But that's just me. Uh, some of the weapons, hooking up the bazooka to the back. It could also stay there folded. That's pretty cool. You can also put a blaster effect inside of the rifle. I hope you have a big enough case because New Gundam is absolutely huge. I added some footage of how to move the back part. I've seen a lot of people fight with this. It's not that hard. You just have to like push down a little bit at the top and slide it. I've seen people literally take the backpack off of New Gundam and then try and like force it. They're all Asian, so I don't know what the hell they're saying. It clicks in. I don't really like the way it hangs from the back though, to be honest. The bazooka hangs from the back in a real crummy way in my opinion. It's not as sleek as I'd like it to be. And per his request, the new Gundam next to the 160th scale Unicorn Gundam. As you can see, the new Gundam completely towers over this and dwarfs it. It is absolutely massive. It is fantastic. This thing is... I love the size of this. I really do. I don't know what size it's supposed to be. I, I'm pretty sure this is 160th scale. But then again, it depends on where you buy. Bandai's 160th scale is on par with Mechanicor's 172nd scale. So it's all over the place. And I do know New Gundam's a little bigger than Unicorn Gundam, but I don't think it's this much bigger. So scaling is very strange. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. All I can say is I hope you have a big case because this guy is huge. You definitely will not be able to hold the bazooka on his back if you got a Kia glass case. Well, on his shoulder, I should say. Here's the Amaro figure next to Benaji Lynx. Benaji Lynx. I don't know what scale this is. I'm pretty sure Amaro isn't that much bigger than Benaji. But eh, eh, it's hard to get a good 
wiki page that has accurate stats on how tall Armor Array is. They say he's 5'9". I don't know. Char is 5'11". I'm confused. Well, hopefully this helps you out. Um, I would say that despite the price for Collector of Gunpla or Gundam as a whole, the metal structure new Gundam is a must-have. For a little while, I felt that sort of tinge of Briar's remorse, like, oh, this is so expensive, but after looking at it in my case, I don't think I regret it anymore. I'm glad I have it. I feel lucky to own such a piece. Oh, by the way, uh, posability and whatnot, yeah. If you're looking for posability with this, it's very limited. It's not worth it. Just letting you know, don't sit there and think, you know, you're going to pull a swivel here on this guy. It's not happening. Oh, I forgot to mention, the Ombro pilot figure kind of sucks. The paint job they gave them make him, makes him look like a Vulcan. And the maintenance crew figures, they kind of blow too. Like, they're a cool little add-on, and from a distance, they'll look good. But when you get close up, the paint job on them is, you know, it's not that great, really. But they're rubbery, so you won't ever have to worry about them breaking or anything. I guess that's a bone.